uh, I can't remember a time where any world champion uh, has been able to do that. Uh, I mean, I, I guess uh, over the course of various reigns, um, Scrap Iron Adam Pierce was able to do that. But it's not something that was done uh, regularly, for sure. And um, although we had champions defend in New Japan, um, I think we're we're heading into a new era with Nick Aldis. And um, it's been exciting, to say the least. It really has. Uh, especially considering the short amount of time that we're really talking about. You know, who won the title in kind of a slow time of wrestling just before Christmas and everything. And so most of what he's done, he's done in a January through April. So that's, you know, a four-month period. Yeah, and he's done right. it very well. The NWA has taken advantage of any goodwill that uh, Billy Corgan's name has garnered and have been able to use that publicity to show that spotlight on Nick Aldis and do all those great things. Uh, the future is really, really bright. I mean, he's got more House of Hardcore stuff. He's got some other stuff that we'll be talking about later. There's continuation of what's going on for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And we'll be able to see all kinds of great potential matchups coming up with the World Heavyweight Champion. And, I mean, it all started uh, when he defeated Tim Storm in Combat Zone Wrestling. He's had a handful of opponents, 19-plus, since, since he's been a uh, world champion. He's uh, defended all over the world, like we mentioned, in the U.K. He's defended in, obviously, the United States all over the country and in China, where he defeated Colt Boom Boom Cabana. And I think that should be uh, it. It should go without saying how great of a how great of a mov movement this has been for the NWA. I mean, prior to this, uh, you know, things weren't really happening the way we had all hoped they would. But the world champion has been a world champion, and uh, well, I mean, the big announcement hit yesterday, and it's kind of ironic that this big announcement came. 11 years after the announcement of the NWA severing ties with Impact Wrestling. Joining the All In uh, show in Chicago, um, it was announced via the social media press conference at the um, Pro Wrestling Tees that uh, the NWA would be, in fact, a part of House of Heart, excuse me, part of All In. Um, David Logano was actually seen in the press conference before uh, the announcement was made, which uh, we here at Alliance-Wrestling.com were sure to note instantly and started working on um, putting out articles about the show. And as you could see uh, from Alliance-Wrestling.com, um, we, were, we were the first ones to break the news that the NWA was going to be all in. Um, then we also were the first to acknowledge who the uh, opponent would be for all in. And um, it was right after Billy Corgan's uh, speech about the NWA and drawing big numbers in Chicago when Cody Rhodes would uh, identify himself as the challenger to the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Now, I've heard a lot of people have mixed reactions to the NWA, or excuse me, to Cody Rhodes' uh, challenge to Nick Aldis. And I'm wondering what you guys think. DK, what's your opinion on uh, Cody Rhodes kind of seemingly coming out of nowhere to challenge for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship? Well, I don't, I don't really understand why there would be a mixed reaction or why it would surprise anybody in any way, shape, or form. His father, of course, was one of the legendary NWA World Champions. He never held the title that long in any of his three reigns, but you know, he's a legend in the business, Dusty Rhodes. And why wouldn't his son want to achieve something his father had achieved? So I, I, I don't really, I don't really understand why there would be a surprise or why there'd be a mixed reaction. Now, for me on a personal level, 
you guys know that going back to when Cody Rhodes was in WWE before the Stardust and everything like that, I often said I saw a lot of potential in Cody. I once compared Cody Rhodes to stunning Steve Austin or Rocky Maivia, somebody who just hadn't quite hit their stride, hadn't found the right right way to connect, but that when given the chance, I was sure he could bust through. And so, for me, this is the dream match. Cody, Cody Rhodes, and yes, I use that name. WWE can send me a letter if they want. <laughs> uh, you know, Cody Rhodes challenging Nick Aldis, who's a wrestler who I really liked, really enjoyed since his time back on uh, TNA. So, you know, this is a bit of a dream match for me. I'm I'm very excited. Dayton, what about you? Higher wrestling world, the match that probably would mean the absolute most right now to the National Wrestling Alliance is Nick Aldis defending the legendary 10 pounds of leather and gold against the son of a son of a plumber, the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes. It's going to be hard times on Nick Aldis when Cody Rhodes, I think, and I'm going to put a prediction out, takes that, that strap, that world heavyweight championship away from Nick Aldis and becomes something his own brother couldn't be, the second Rhodes member to become the NWA heavyweight champion of the world. If you guys are following us on the Twitch t- channel, that's twitch.tv forward slash Alliance Wrestling. We had some audio issues to begin the show, but it should be cleared up now. Um, there, we have a little bit of video of Nick Aldis uh, fighting against Tim Storm, Nick Aldis versus James Ellsworth, and uh, basically Nick Aldis uh, in the ring with Colt Cabana. Uh, when I, and I say little film because there's not a whole lot. Um, you, you know, this is kind of a dream match for Cody Rhodes to get an opportunity to do what his dad uh, did and to Jaden's point to do what his brother never could do. Um, it's it's very exciting. And, uh, and when a lot of people heard that uh, Cody Rhodes would be leaving the WWE, all of them, well, not all of them, but a lot of them assumed that a run with the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship would be certainly uh, in the works, if not if not a surefire thing. Um, and for Cody to get the shot, uh, I mean, one thing we know for sure that the uh, the NWA and Cody have been flirting about this for quite some time. I mean, um, I know in China that there was talks that um, that Cody was laboring for an ch- opportunity to face uh, Nick Aldis. And, of course, there's contracts involved. There's a lot of uh, red tape to, to cut because, again, Cody in the United States has been exclusive to Ring of Honor and in Japan is exclusive to New Japan. And with Nick Aldis not competing for either company at the current time, um, it seemed like that match just wasn't going to happen. But th- that didn't mean that the innuendo wasn't happening, uh, at least on Twitter, when when a fan who uh, mentioned to Cody Rhodes said, hey, you know, do you have any plans to challenge for the world title? Um, not, uh, and the fan would uh, note that it would elevate the title considerably in his words. Um, Cody, the uh, politician, responded with a positive uh, response. Lagana, Billy, and Nick Aldis are doing great stuff with it. Um, but what really piqued my uh, interest in this uh, back and forth is that all this responded with the proverb, iron sharpens iron. And so over the past few months, we've been hearing uh, at least a desire on both parts for this match to happen. I mean, anyone who was watching the uh, 10 Pounds of Gold episode 19 watch this space when uh, the National Treasure was on its point blank if he would ever get a match with Cody um, or the Young Bucks, or even appear at all in. And at this point, it was still speculation. There was nothing uh, 100% agreed upon. And uh, Nick kind of said, like, yeah, he felt like he should be at all in because he is the world's champion, and it would only elevate the show if he were on the show. Um, when asked who he would like to face, you know, uh, Nick didn't hold any, uh, didn't hold his words back. He said he wanted to face either Cody 
who is a former Ring of Honor world champion, or his friend, Marty Skrull, who, you know, they both go back to their days in the UK. So, I, I mean, there has been very much a romance brewing between uh, the guys in All In and uh, Nick Aldis for quite some time. And it looks like we're finally going to see this match come together that a lot of us, I think, have been very interested in seeing. And, uh, you know, going back to their days with Global Force Wrestling, Cody and Nick are certainly familiar with each other. Um, you know, while Cody was the next-gen champion in Global Force, Nick Aldis was the Global Force champion, the, the heavyweight champion. So it seems like, you know, uh, the two are certainly familiar with each other. Jaden, what do you think? Yeah, they're pat. Their paths are converging right now. Nick Aldis and his Aldis Crusader living on the edge of a lightning bolt. But I think maybe that his American dream might become his American nightmare when he's facing the one and only Cody Rhodes. I mean, first of all, Cody Rhodes has been wrestling up and down throughout Ring of Honor, but he hasn't quite had the same schedule, I don't think, as Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis seems to be wrestling all over the world. True, not in Japan as much, but all over defending the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and doing all the media and doing all the publicity and doing everything he needs to not only put himself on the map, but re-put the NWA where it belongs. Um, I, I think it's going to be a tough match for Nick Aldis. I think he is going to lie and cheat and steal and pull hair and poke eyes and bite and bleed and fight and do whatever he needs to to be the bull of the woods. But I still, once again, I can't see Nick Aldis leaving Chicago without or with that 10 pounds of gold. I still to this day, and I will stick by it until it happens or until it doesn't happen, I really believe destiny is on Cody Rhodes' side. He's going to be the next heavyweight champion of the National Wrestling Alliance. Wow, uh, I don't with a statement like that. But uh, seriously, I I think one of the advantages that we really got going here is, you know, I think a lot of people are surprised because to a lot of people, this all-in show was going to be really more like a Ring of Honor or New Japan or something like that type show. And I don't think a lot of people were understanding what's going on. And, you know, maybe we can get into the history of what all, how All In came about. But, I mean, Cody wants something. He wants history that will be talked about forever and ever and ever. Things come and go. But... Being the only father-son team to hold the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, kind of like Dorian Terry Funk are the only brothers to have ever held it. I mean, I'm sort of with Jaden here. I, I think there's a touch of destiny in the air, and it's it's going to be hard to deny Cody this. See, right now, well, funny you guys, Nick Aldis. Go ahead. Right now, Nick Aldis is. Whining and dining with kings and queens, but I think after all in in Chicago, he's going to be sitting in an alley and put, eat pork and beans. <laughs> well, and speaking of uh, irony and playing by the numbers and reading tea leaves, um, I mentioned earlier in the in the broadcast that it was um, it was May thirteenth. Uh, 2007, 11 years ago today, that the NWA severed ties with the Impact Wrestling Group. And that resulted in a tournament to reclaim the glory. Uh, we're all very familiar with that tournament. Um, the end result was in Bayman, Puerto Rico, Scrap Iron, Adam Pierce defeating Brent Albright to become the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And it changed the direction 
that the NWA was heading. It certainly changed the look and feel of the NWA as it crowned its first champion post, the uh, Impact Wrestling um, Agreement. September 1st is the date of All In. Following an announcement that came on May the 13th, 2018, literally, I feel like history is repeating itself. I feel like we're seeing... uh, (laughs) <laughs> like we're living in the uh, matrix or something because there seems to be a glitch because it, it feels like we might be headed towards a new direction for the NWA. Um, as we previously mentioned, Cody Rhodes is exclusive to ring of honor. Cody Rhodes is exclusive to new Japan pro wrestling. If he were to win the NWA world's heavyweight championship, the only places he's going to be able to defend it realistically will be, Ring of Honor, or New Japan Pro Wrestling, unless he has uh, permission from Ring of Honor, which, you know, they're not obligated to give. So I I really feel like we might be on the dawn of a new era. We might be seeing something that we haven't seen before, or at least not in a long time. Cody Rhodes winning the title would mean the NWA World Heavyweight Championship would be a commodity scene in Ring of Honor Wrestling. Again, something we haven't seen since Pierce. We can see the title returned in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Again, something we haven't seen since... Uh, uh, help me out, guys. Um, I'm drawing a blank uh, now. Iron Man Rob uh, Conway? Thank you. Rob Conway, also Hiroshi Tenzin, or uh, Kojima, who both held the title in New Japan. So, I mean, we're really heading into you know a strange plan, and that's one thing that you hear both Lagana and Nick Aldis uh, have mentioned more than once the the days of being limited to where that title could be defended are are growing thinner and thinner we remember the uh and i know you guys will shudder but the uh nwa uh, excuse me the uh the match between josephus and tim storm that was a closed arena match that was filmed in impact wrestling for tim storm's return uh clause for the nwa world title and that was filmed in the Impact studio. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that the NWA and Impact have a working relationship, but it certainly means that there's something there or there's some connection to see NWA talents in an Impact wrestling arena. Well, the world is definitely a different place. And a different, exactly. place, than it was, different place than it was even six months ago. For example... As of just recently, Impact and WWE have been sharing some uh, videos and doing some work together. And, of course, WWE has worked with ROH in the past about getting some videos for uh, some of their DVDs and network specials and all that stuff. So we are not quite in as limited of a space. Now, I don't know, I'm not privy to contract negotiations. I don't care, really. But I would imagine that if there was a contract signed between the NWA champion to defend his title against Cody Rhodes, there very easily could have been something worked in that said, if Cody wins the title, then there's an expectation that you'll defend the title, you know, for the NWA as needed and required. So I, I don't know that there would necessarily be a limit on it just if Cody wins it. But it will be, and everything we're talking about now is speculation. Jade and I can say right. we think Cody's going to win what we want. You know, we all remember the number of times that any and everybody Rick Flair feuded with was going to win it. (laughs) You know. Right. What our dreams are and what our predictions are and what reality holds are often different things. So, the the wrestling world is different, which is one of the things... uh, Mr. Corgan and Mr. Lagan are trying to take advantage of now. But on the other hand, it's still a 
wrestling product that has to be produced and put out and everything. And so we'll see what the future holds. I'm sure that they're still working on things to uh, have their own internet show or maybe some type of TV or, you know, something that's more than just a, here's a title. To be right. Defended. So, you know, we're in a very fluid, ever-changing situation. And you never know who, what, when, or where it's going to pop up. I mean, look what happened at the last uh, Hollywood taking. You know, a new challenger right. emerged there. That is definitely true, DK. Uh, it is a small wrestling world, just like the Internet's made the entire world smaller. It's making the entire wrestling world smaller with Impact working with Lucha Underground and Impact working with the WWE and Ring of Honor working with New Japan Pro Wrestling and all these different people working with different people. It's a great time to be in the wrestling business to try to get your name into multiple places. Uh, as for Cody Rhodes, he may be exclusive in North America with Ring of Honor. He may be exclusive for where the New Japan Pro Wrestling promotes for New Japan Pro Wrestling, but that still opens up like Australia or uh, the United Kingdom or all of Europe. That that also could be NWA World Championship matches that are for Cody Rhodes can defend under a banner, not Ring of Honor or New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that's a good point too, because there are uh, emerging areas. Um, you know, David Marquez's United Wrestling Network although mostly based in the United States, uh, does have territories in the United Kingdom with uh, IPW UK, who's already booked Nick Aldis on one of their shows. Uh, there's also their Canadian counterpart, um, Canadians Wrestling Elite, uh, that features uh, Chase Owens quite regularly and also features uh, Tornado Tony Cozina and Hot Shot Danny Duggan and a lot of talent from the great Northwest um, on their shows, and there, we could quite possibly see a world champion defended in that area. And there's still uh, many areas in the United States that um, United Wrestling Network works with that at some point, if Cody uh, were to become world champion, I'm sure something would have to be, would have, to be worked out because, again, there, there would be a high demand to have Cody uh, defend that world championship in towns where the NWA is still important and the NWA still thrives. And even though that there's just a single, singular world champion at this point, um, the NWA still carries a lot of weight and still carries a lot of value. Yeah, and I think, you know, as this goes on, Nick, all this is adding to that value. Uh, the Lagana and Corgan, the half that they're taking, they're, they are adding to the value of that NWA title. Uh a lot of people hold world titles in a promotion, but the NWA has been the one title that is doesn't have a boundary of a promotion. Right. Yeah, there is no singular entity in the National Wrestling Alliance. You can see, possibly in the future, the National Wrestling Alliance Heavyweight Championship of the World defending in New Japan Pro Wrestling on Impact Wrestling on Ring of Honor television, on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, on House of Hardcore, uh, maybe anywhere around the world. You could see the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And in my opinion, whether it's opening match or main event, having that much exposure in that many different areas and in places that may actually appreciate the history and the lineage and the respect of the National Wrestling Alliance and their Heavyweight Championship, I think is going to be a big deal. Just I hope they stay away from places where um, they will make the wrong kind of reaction for the NWA, and they're not exactly very not very uh, receptive of what the NWA brings forward. Yes, I wouldn't recommend Hood Slam Wrestling in California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's funny you bring that up. 
Um, that's where I think all this next defense will be is in Hoodland. I'm just kidding, guys. That's not true. That's I'm just being silly. Um, but, yeah, you know, and I think the great thing, too, uh, with this all-in show, um, kind of focusing now on them, is that this is a very much an all-inclusive type show where a lot of people were reluctant at first to think that this was just maybe a Bullet Club event or a being the elite event. This is really a who's who of what's hot in independent wrestling right now. And, I mean, to, to say that, uh, you know, they're short on star, star power... Uh, couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. I mean, obviously, the being the elite cast, um, you know, the members of the Bullet Club, Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, uh, Kenny Omega, Adam Page, Marty Skrull, they're all going to be taking part on the show, along with uh, uh, TV's Arrow, Stephen Amell. I'm sure a lot of our listeners are fans of the show Arrow. He will be making his <clears throat> third or fourth wrestling match, two with the WWE, one with Ring of Honor. Um, the interesting thing, though, is some of the other talent that's coming into the show. I mean, Tessa will be there. She's all in. The Rainman, he's all in. Jay Lethal's all in. Heck, uh, Pentagon Black. Uh, what's his What's his uh, impact name? I forget. Sierra Mierdo. <laughs> you guys always make fun of me when I can't pronounce these names. He'll be there. Um, Joey Janela, the bad boy, he's going to be there. I mean, this is a veritable who's who hot in independent wrestling right now. And so it's, it's kind of exciting. I mean, at least from a fan's perspective, I know, um, just debating somebody on Facebook about this and saying, well, this isn't a true independent show and they're being backed by ring of honor or this, that, and the other thing. I, I think what the trio of the Bucks and Cody were able to do is kind of amazing. I mean, in the last decade, yeah, we've seen smaller shows and arenas. I have uh, fond memories of the uh, NWA Pro Wrestling, or as they are now known, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, touring shows in Las Vegas and in uh, Arizona and Texas and in Florida and Atlanta and, and really running these arena shows all over the United States, the, rest, the Pro Wrestling Summit or the Copa de Lucha, um, or the NWA 60th anniversary uh, tour. But that's not 10,000 people. And most of those venues, you know, God bless Dave Marquez for doing those arena shows, they had between, you know, 6,000, 5,000, some of them as low as 1,500. Uh, they were running shows on baseball diamonds with uh, 2,000 people in attendance. It's not the same as filling out a 10,000 seat venue and ensure. There is a huge cast of characters involved with this show, but I think you've got to give credit where credit is due. All in, you know, these these gentlemen have definitely put the wrestling business on notice. Uh, it's something that we haven't seen in a very long time, which is uh, a rogue wrestling promotion. And I, I use that term loosely because I know they are affiliated with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I know they're affiliated with Ring of Honor, but this isn't a Ring of Honor show, guys. This isn't a New Japan show. This is this is an all-in show. And I think, uh, I think that should be celebrated that somebody in the industry is doing something that's got 10,000 people, you know, ready to jump all in. Tickets were selling. The front row seats, and I know this because I was trying to buy them, Front row seats were $153, and they sold out. The The general mission tickets were $28, and those sold out. The entire venue sold out in about 30 minutes. And, yes, they did announce Rey Mysterio would be at the show the day of uh, the press conference, but I don't think people were waiting on Rey Mysterio's name to advance them on whether they were or were not going to buy tickets to the show. DK, what do you think? Well, I mean, I agree. I mean, and Ray Mysterio is a perfect example of this not being a specific promotion show. I mean, he's been on WWE. He's been in New Japan. He's He's been several places now. He, he's taken advantage of a surge in his popularity. And, uh, you know, look, you got to give the guys credit. They created a buzz when some wrestling know-it-all who will remain nameless unless you guys want to name them. 
you know, basically said only WWE. Well, I can't. Hey, who me? No, I'm not that type of guy. No, sir. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> excuse me. I've been sick uh, coughing here. Uh, you know, said nobody but WWE could sell out a 10,000 person arena. And so they took it as a personal challenge and they created a buzz and they got excited. Now, look, could they do this again next month? Probably not. Uh, will it make money? Only they know. But here's the important thing they found a 10,000 person fan base, which is obviously much bigger if you're going to sell out in, you know, 37 minutes, that isn't happy with the products that we're seeing out there. True. Well, I Jaden, well, um, yeah, it's that. true. It's, they want to, there's more than 10,000 people out there that are not happy right now. And people are already making a big deal that Ring of Honor did 6,000 during WrestleMania weekend. But to me, this is a lot more impressive. Just not, again, for the extra 4,000 people. But there is no big event in town that they could try to uh, draw out of. This is basically 10,000 fans coming from all over the world, spending their hard-earned money to be part of an event that I believe there's only one match even known about right now. So, you know, that's just drawing on the power of the fact that it could happen. Yes, back in the day, they used to draw $10,000 to a, a seat every Monday night at the same thing, you know, constantly 10000 every single week. But that has that has long been gone with the wrestling world right now. I. Uh, I'm very proud of everybody involved with that, and it's a great time to be part of the wrestling business. It makes me very excited to be part of the wrestling business. Um, I'll be honest, until they announced Cody Rhodes versus, um, they called us for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, I didn't really have that much interest in it. Nothing really shined that much with me that made me really care in all honest opinion, but now with this, it's even got my interest in yeah, I'm a jaded old wrestling fan and a jaded old wrestling member of the professional business, but it I, it's just something very exciting and very uh, historic in the making right now, what they're doing with the all-in. Well, you know, and, and if you're going back to, gosh, uh, here in Los Angeles, and I'm sure you guys have your own exceptions uh, in your in your areas, but you know, I think the last time a promotion that wasn't the WWE drew this kind of a crowd was the, when Worlds Collide pay-per-view, when AAA uh, partnered with um, some America, uh, American wrestlers associated with World Championship Wrestling, and, you know, it broke attendance records for a non-WWE wrestling event, but that was in 1984. You know, that's, that's like almost, uh, what? Uh, I do the math for me. That's over uh, 24 years ago. And to see something that, again, you know, the Bullet Club started off as a crowd of, uh, 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 excuse me, the Bullet Club started off as a faction. I mean, it, when you break this down to what it is, this is the NWO winning the war. This is the NWO really branching out from, uh, WCW or WWE, or depending on how you want to look at it, and putting on their own show. You know, Hall Nash didn't do this. Hogan didn't do this. You know, this the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes. Now, I, I, it, it's not wasted on me that this is a different era of wrestling too. But again, what we're seeing here, I mean, it's 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 historic. You can't really call it anything but historic. And it should be celebrated as such. But to DKM's point, can they do this every week? Probably not. And I think there was probably a, uh, you know, a perfect storm, so to speak, about this show. The fact that it is in Chicago, which is a pretty good wrestling crowd. Uh, it is bringing talents that don't normally come to Chicago. You know, being, uh, you know, the Okada, uh, Mysterio, um, 
it, it's a popular brand, the Bullet Club. Uh, the fact that they're, you know, pro wrestling tees is a part of the part of what's happening. You know, that's giving them a base of operations to have podcasts and meet and greets. Um, you know, and do a lot of the legwork with advertising and whatnot in that area. I mean, I don't know that All In would still draw ten thousand in, let's say, Los Angeles. I don't know that All In would draw ten thousand in Dallas. But I think they found the right recipe for success. And, you know, I, I still want to say that regardless of what people may or may not think, this is a huge victory for, I think, pro wrestling. Um, you know, I've been an advocate since, uh, well, for the last five years or so, saying that wrestling is changing. Wrestling is evolving. It's not the same sport it was 10 years ago. It, it's not. And we're seeing new ways for people to consume pro wrestling. We see uh, the NWA attempting a different route, or different route to distribute its product. We're seeing uh, Lucha Underground presenting its wrestling in a much different fashion. And, you know, All In is doing wrestling without a promotion. And the NWA currently is doing a world champion without a promotion. So, I mean, I think this is, a, I don't want to say it's a culmination of the way wrestling is, is headed, but it certainly looks like, I mean, if the, if the young bucks and Cody can do this now and Jericho is going to take a cruise and bring wrestling out into the ocean. I mean, what's next? What's, what's the next thing that, uh, you know, a new way of doing things, a new way of, uh, promoting pro wrestling, you know, Jaden, you're, you've got your hands full with, uh, with the work that you do for dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiators. What is this? mean to you? I mean, how do you see this? Oh, I see this as a major positive in professional wrestling again. Um, in the late, mid and late 90s, wrestling hit a bit of resurgence where everybody was kind of doing well. And I think hopefully maybe that's start to the ground, the grassroots, the ground floor of wrestling doing well from everybody's perspective again. Um, you know, personally though, I think I'd be really uh, way more impressed if they start doing this in Antarctica. If they could draw 10,000 people to Antarctica, now that would be impressive. Or how about the moon? The lunar heavyweight champion, well, the lunar one eighth the head with the weight champion. Uh, that will be great, you know. Let's see now with the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes if they can start doing things where we're, we're defended on all the planets and Pluto. That would be something hey, that, that, I think the next level that you need to go to. I'm glad you made the distinction that Pluto is not a planet. Um, yes, it I is. Know that, uh, gets the... <laughs> <laughs> DK, I mean, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, obviously we've been sharing our opinion about All In for quite some time. Well, uh, I was a lot like Jaden. I didn't have a lot of interest in it. Now, that being said, no matches have been announced or anything like that. But it was... It was just kind of like, okay, it's a independent show. It's not a lot different than than something that one of the major promotions could put on if, you know, they teamed with somebody else or whatever. It, it didn't excite me just in the idea of being a wrestling card. Obviously, you know... For what a lot of people's a dream matchup, that certainly adds on. Again, Rey Mysterio, who's hit a resurgence in his popularity, that certainly doesn't hurt. But I, to, to quote Jim Ross, wrestling isn't really complicated. I mean, we may watch it differently. We may have different ways to get it, consume it. Uh, styles may be different. But it, wrestling in and of itself isn't complicated. I need an emotional attachment. But that's what I lack with WWE. I, I have the network, and I did not even watch their last pay-per-view or special event or whatever the heck they call it nowadays because I had no attachment to any single match that was on there. People are attached to the Young Bucks. People are attached to Cody Rhodes. People are attached to the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. 
And that's what you need. Find a way to get me attached. I think another thing that this does, I think when people see Nick Aldis versus Cody Rhodes, I think they see more than one match, no matter what the outcome is. I think what you see is a potential rivalry. And that might be something that the NWA has been missing in these last four months. They haven't had really a chance to build anything quite yet. But, you know, when we watched Dusty versus Ric Flair, that was a great rivalry. When you're here in Texas and you watch the Von Erichs and the Freebirds, or the Von Erichs go for the world title, those were great rivalries. Chris Adams versus Jimmy Garvin, Tommy Rich versus Buzz Sawyer, Jerry Lawler versus anybody in Memphis. Uh, you know, these were the things. Why do world-class sell out the Sportatorium at 4,500 people for three straight years, running every week? Because... People loved the wrestlers. People hated the wrestlers. We hated the free birds. There was no, nothing like today where the heels have catchphrases that the fans yell back with them. Adam Cole, baby. But <laughs> we, were, we were emotionally attached to, to what was going on. And I think I think that is what All In has suddenly grabbed a hold of. People are looking for something they can grab a hold of that they can go, I want to follow this. I want to see what's going to happen. I want to know what happens when Nick Aldis takes on Cody Rhodes. I want to know what happens if Cody wins that title. I want to see the pictures set up side by side of both of them holding the uh, Cody and Dusty holding the 10 pounds of gold. You know, that is something that I think far too many promoters, big and small, miss. Jaden? Well, think about it like this it's not just a crusade versus destiny, it's not just. Great Britain versus the United States and the next coming of the Revolutionary War. It's not just a battle between decency and filth. It's the right now <laughs> it is two people going one on one for the most the longest reigning and most prestigious, the granddaddy of them all. Two people who want that belt more than they want anything else in their entire life. And they were going to bleed, and they are going to sweat, and they're going to pay the price. So one day, one of those will walk out of that 18 by 18 foot squared circle as the only true world heavyweight champion and be able to say that that night they were the man. Woo! You need lessons with Charlotte. Yeah, well, me yes. and uh, Bobby Roode both, right? Yeah. Exactly. That wasn't very glorious. I never tend to be glorious. So, guys, I just want to, again, uh, thank you to everybody who has been listening to the podcast today. We're about to wrap things up here. Um, I do want to give a quick shout-out to uh, to all of our listeners and all of our visitors to alliance-wrestling.com over the past 11 years. Um, to all the guys that join us on the message board who either agree with us or disagree with us. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as the conversation is continuing. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, guys. I'm, I'm not sure what the future holds. The year that I decided that I dedicate myself further more on this website than I had in the previous 11. Um, the trip to China was just the beginning. I'm, I'm really trying to get more uh, content up to the website news information and i hope you guys will stick around for the journey um again uh we have all the social media that you could ask for and then some our videos are now going to be posted at twitch and you could uh, follow us on twitch at twitch.com forward slash excuse me twitch.tv forward slash alliance wrestling uh 
there's no dash, there's no space. It's just Alliance Wrestling. That's also the same way to find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Alliance Wrestling. You could follow us on Twitter at the Alliance blog, or um, which has been also a new uh, creation for us, is the Instagram page, and that's Alliance Wrestling. Uh, Instagram.com forward slash Alliance, the word dash wrestling. Um, and a lot of the photos I've been posting over the course of the last uh, month and a half uh, mostly have been the photos from China, but also including uh, photos that I recently took at the Wrestle Fair that included guys like uh, Mil Mascaras or the Samoan Dynasty, or, you know, Rikishi, um, his, you know, the Samoan family, and uh, so much more. So if you guys would like to like and follow these pages, uh, these social media outlets, and we'll continue to hopefully keep producing content that you guys are proud of and that you're happy to be a part of. Um, and again, uh, if you could join us on our message board, we're always uh, looking for uh, people to fight with and people to tell that they're stupid um, or, you know, listen to their opinion and develop a rational conversation and, and, have some dialogue there on the message board. But um, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, Jaden, is there anything you would like to uh, pitch or post or talk about before we go? Well, there will be an Alliance Guys web page, uh, I'm sorry, broadcast about the dangers of adrenaline wrestling gladiators coming up on June 23rd at the Max Fed Sports Center located on 240 Delcy Drive South in Glassburg, New Jersey. I also want to let everybody know I saw a little preview of the new Han Solo movie, and I'm going to spoil something right here. Han Solo, he makes that Kessel run in under 12 bar sex. I know it's a big spoiler, but I figured I had to tell everybody Jeez. about it. And with that, Salt in the Moon, DK, uh, do you have anything you'd like to talk about, uh, uh, brag about, post about before we uh, end the show for the day? No. <laughs> well of course the um real quick the Aldous Crusade does continue on uh this summer as um it's already been reported that uh, uh Nick Aldous will be defending the title in Australia. We know that he's going to be uh, at the House of Hardcore in Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, Queensland, and that all takes place before all in, the all in show with Cody Rhodes. So if you guys are wanting to stay tuned for all the news and information, of course, please visit alliance-wrestling.com for DKM, for Jaden, and for 